Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Hey folks, I'm fishing with my good friend Jamie Usher. And Jamie and I have uh, been fishing together for the last couple of years. We had her on the fishing scene last year and we got her back out in the boat again because it's the middle of the summer and if there's one person I know that can find me the fish, it's Jamie Usher. Jamie, thanks for joining us again. Yes, you're welcome. Well, listen, we're out here middle of the summer we're after some bluegills and sunfish today and typically a lot of folks think when you're fishing sunnies that you know you're fishing by the docks fishing up in the reeds and those are good areas especially earlier in the year and they'll produce you know pretty darn good right up uh, through about the end of June or so but it's now when you get the water temperatures way up there in the mid to upper 70s and you're in the heat of the uh, of, of the summertime period those fish are going to move out a lot of times out into deeper water. You'll still catch some real small ones by the docks and an occasional big one, but to catch a lot of fish or more of them and hopefully bigger ones, you're going to probably do a lot better fishing out on some of these deep sunken islands. And that's what we're on today on the lake that we happen to be fishing today. We're fishing off the uh, edge of a sunken island. Now the sunken island, there Jamie's got one, little guy there, the sunken island comes up to about seven, eight feet on top, and then it's surrounded by deeper water. Up on top, there's some coontail, there's some cabbage weeds in there, and so there's a lot of insects and small minnows that are hanging out around there. And uh, that's why you're gonna find these sunfish out in these areas like that. And what we're doing is just kinda working these jigs. There's one right there. We're casting out and just working these jigs around and over the top and, and seeing where these fish are. Here's a little guy here. And you'll get plenty of action. And it's a lot of fun. We're not using floats or anything because the fish were, are down there fairly deep. You could go with a slip bobber, but really some of the best thing is just to cast out there and let it kind of slowly sink down and just slowly work that jig back towards the boat. Now we're using really small jigs. We're using Jamie lures, and Jamie, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, how long ago was it that you started uh, your business and started making Jamie's lures? It was about five years ago. Five years ago. Now, what what particular reason? What what got you thinking? Gosh, I'm going to start making my own uh, my own jigs, things like that. Anything in particular? Um, more like the love for fishing. And yeah. Well, you do have a love for fish. Now, you're uh, what? 12, right? Yep. Now, how long have you been an avid fisherman? Um, well, I started when I was about five or six years old. Okay. And um, I know that you folks, uh, your mom and dad and stuff, used to have, the re have a resort on Franklin Lake. And you actually, you know, took people out on the lake and everything and, and did some guiding with them, didn't you? Yep. And then you come back and, and I hear you're one of the best, uh, best fish cleaners there is around these parts. Yeah. You don't mind cleaning fish, huh? No, not at all. Now, when you uh, you know when you clean sunfish, do you usually flay them or do you scale them? And um, how do you usually do it? It depends how they want me to do it. Okay. So some people, whoops, some people I suppose like it um, with the the skin left on there, huh? Yeah. A little, little extra, gives it a little extra flavor. And now, uh, so you've been building and making lures for uh, about five years or so now, and now. For your busiest time for actually building lures, you usually do that mainly in the winter time, or do you kind of do it all the time, or what? Um, I try to make 10 to 20 lures a day. How many? 10 to 20. 10 to 20 a day. Now, is that like in the summertime too, or just mainly in the winter time when you have a little more time on your hands, or what? Um, well, just whenever I get time. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. These little lures here, these are the neatest little lures. It's a, just a small jig. It's got some, what is mainly the, the, the dressing on there, Jamie's got some, what, some, uh, mainly some tinsel and, and yeah. what is it, some little, tinsel uh, and deer tail. Deer tail in there. Mm -hmm. And then the key though, here, and I love these little lures, that these little jigs you've made this time, Jamie, that we're using today. And they've got, uh, what, a, like a little blade on the bottom, don't they? They're called a pony head flicker. A pony head flicker. 
and Jamie makes these, and uh, that little blade gives that little added flash to the uh, to the uh, lure, so that can really help uh, you know get some bites on these fish. And the water is a little bit stained, so that uh, little flicker probably helps even more so. I got us a little off to one side here, so I'm gonna move us back over more towards the middle of this hump. And folks, you can find these humps all over on lakes. You can look at a map of a particular lake, but a lot of times the maps won't even show some of these smaller humps. And this hump here on the lake that we're on is not very big. It's, you know, about the about size of uh, two of my boats put together, so it's something that isn't, um, you know, real, real easy to find. Jamie knew where it was, and she directed us right to it. She, she's our uh, GPS unit for today. So I'm gonna get us back over towards the buoy. And what I did was I threw a buoy out onto the uh, top of that little uh, hump out here just to make sure that I can know where it is. And we've got the wind blowing a little bit, so sometimes you can get blown off. You got one, Jamie? Yep. All right, that one's a pretty good fighter. That's one thing about Sunnies. Even the small ones can really put up a pretty darn good fight. There's a little better one. And it is a lot of fun. Boy, you won't find a better eating fish than bluegills or sunfish. We'll be back with more of the fishing scene coming up after this. Our conditions for today, we've got a south wind that um, is blowing anywhere. Whoops, just missed one. We got a south wind that's blowing anywhere from 10 up to 25 miles per hour. Now we're kind of on the south end of the lake here, so the wind isn't quite as bad. Our air temperature is about 90 degrees. Water temperature, 77 degrees. Water clarity, there Jamie's got another fish. Water clarity, I would say medium at best. That's why these little flicker jigs, these little flashers that we have on there that Jamie uh, made with these jigs, really, uh, you know, is an added attraction to getting on some of these bluegills out here. And we've had uh, sky cover has been kind of variably cloudy. It's, you know, it's cloudy for a little bit, then all of a sudden the sun will pop out. And there are a uh, severe thunderstorm watch out for the area. Nothing on right now, of course, if there was, we wouldn't be out here filming. But so we will keep an eye on the, uh, on the clouds. And, um, and that's something I suggest to everybody. Boy, when you're out there, you know, especially if they got any kind of watches out, there's one. Make sure that you, uh, that you keep an eye on the sky. Boy, even the little ones, even the little guys, just dig. Come here, buddy. You go get your great-great-grandfather. And you tell him that he can be a, a, a TV star on the fishing scene, and we're going to put him back. We're not going to eat him. You get one, Jamie? Yeah. OK. So what we're doing, folks, pretty simple. We, we found the hump. We're just moving around it. We've got the small, one of the Jamie lures on there. I've got a pink one on. Jamie, what do you got, an orange one? Orange. Orange one. And we got it tipped with a uh, wax worm. And then above, there's one. And above the, uh, oh, no, it's a weed. I'd measure that one, but he's not quite big enough. Um, above the, uh, above that jig, we've got a small split shot to help it weight it down a little bit. You know what, folks, I was just looking at those weeds, and again, that shows me why these sunfish are out hanging around this area. There was lots of all kinds of little bugs on those weeds, and those sunfish, they'll go down, and they'll suck those bugs right off, right off of those weeds. So you don't always necessarily have to find weeds right up near shore. You can find them out here in the middle of the lake also with these humps. I just missed one. So Jamie, of all the fishing that you do, what? Uh, let me guess. Is bluegill one of your one of your favorite fish to fish for? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they really are fun, aren't they? And oh, I just missed one. You know, when you take people out fishing, do uh, most of the folks you take out you fish for the for the big bluegills that are found on this lake? Normally, that's what we do. I yeah. Whatever bites. Yeah. Well, that's you know. Sometimes people get so hung up on wanting to fish for a, a particular species. And the walleye bite this summer on a lot of the lakes, it's been a little bit tough. And I know on some of the lakes around the Detroit Lakes area, there's been a large hatch of perch. And when there's all that food out there for them, it makes, or Jamie's got another one, it makes the uh, walleye bite 
that much tougher. I know last year, like on Lake Mille Lacs, the, the walleyes were literally jumping into the boat because there was just nothing for them to eat. And then they had a big hatch perch this year, and boy, now fishing's a lot different over on Mille Lacs. So it varies from year to year. And here's the thing, you can almost always get on some sunfish, some bluegills, and uh, you might not always catch the biggest ones like these here, but hey, there's always a chance that uh, you're gonna get into some bigger ones, and at least you'll get some action. It's always fun to catch something. It is, that's right. It is, it's always, it's better to catch something than not to catch anything at all. Get on the other, there, there's one. Get on the other side of this hump. These, these fish folks are found, we're getting the little ones here now, so we're gonna move out just a little bit and see if maybe they're out, the bigger ones are out in a little deeper water, but we're, um, we're catching these fish all around here, this whole island, we're just kind of moving around. I'm gonna, Jamie's got one, huh? I'm gonna uh, cast out my jig this time without any bait on and see what happens. How's that one feel, Jamie? Any better? Nice one. Yeah? Oh yeah, there's a nicer one. Boy, they're pretty fish. I love that nice yellow chest that they have. And... These are the males right here. That one there? Yep. The ones with the orange and the purple on them are Oh males. yeah. Yeah, good fish. So are you still getting yours with the wax worm on? Yep. Okay. Well, I'll try it without one. Let's see what happens with that. Jamie, you know, when you um, clean up a bunch of fish, obviously you probably like to eat fish too, I would think, huh? Oh, yeah. What's your, what's your favorite, you got a particular way that you like your mom or dad to, to cook the bluegills? Any particular recipe that you like best? Um, I like them um, with crunched up pretzels and a little bit of flour mixed in with it. Ooh, that sounds good. And you dump them in egg. Okay. And then you, the ones that you dunked in egg, then you put it in a Ziploc bag with your pretzels and flour mix it up and put it in the frying pan. I bet that is good. So do you, now do you, do you kind of, do you crush up the pretzels a little bit? Yep, just yeah. crunch them up like flour, like okay. the flour looks. And then you add a little bit more flour. Yep. And then put them in a bag and put the, the, the coated fillets in there, shake them up, throw them in the frying pan. Yep. Oof, you're getting me hungry already. I'm gonna have to try that. I've never tried the pretzel mix, but that sounds really, really good. So folks, there's all kinds of ways you can cook fish. Hey, Cook them the way you like them, and believe me, bluegills, you won't find a better fish to eat than a bunch of bluegills or sunnies. More of the fishing scene coming up after this. Our Detroit Lakes Tourism Bureau Photo of the Week is from Morgan Miller of Twin Valley, Minnesota, with a beautiful Tulabee Lake bass. If you'd like to... The Beards has one on, finally. Hey, there's another bad one there. Now, see, we're out a little bit deeper water. And I'm just dragging that jig. Oh, there's a pretty nice one there. Yeah. Um, Jamie, getting back to your lure business now. So now I would imagine when you're at the resort, you know, I, I would imagine you probably sell them right out of your, your little bait shop. Because you got a little bait shop at the resort, correct? Yep. And what do you sell at the bait shop? Do you, minnows and other live bait? Minnows and crawlers and leeches. Leeches are a little hard to find right now. Yeah. Now the crawlers. Do you, uh, do you order those crawlers in by the flats, or do you go out and, and, uh, and catch them after rainfall, or? Um, I got a little, I get my, normally all my bait and stuff from Strom's Bait. Oh, sure. And that's, I just go in and normally in the morning, early in the morning, go in and get whatever I need. And get your crappie minnows. Now, do you just, for minnows, do you carry anything besides crappie minnows, or? Crappie minnows and fatheads. Okay. And suckers that people ask for them. Yeah. And then you get your crawlers. And then uh, do you sell your Jamie's lures out of the bait shop too? Yes. Okay. Oops, I just missed one. Is it, uh, I would imagine, when you come into the resort uh, with somebody that you've been taking out fishing and have a, uh, a uh, live well full of nice bluegills and stuff, and they're asking what they're catching them on and they find out, I would imagine it might be a little hard to keep up with the demand, huh? Yeah. There you got one. I think oh, I just got a weed. Yeah. Oh, you get a little little grass there. So, do you uh, do you sell your lures in other places too, Jamie? I sell my lures at Quality Bait and Tackle in Detroit Lakes. Okay, and then at your bait shop there at the resort. Yep. That's awesome. 
So do you have a particular uh, a particular jig or a style of jig or a color of jig that uh, is kind of like your all-time favorite? Uh, it probably has to be my guinea jig. Wait, what's the name of it? The guinea jig. The guinea jig. Now, what did, tell, tell our listeners and our viewers what the guinea jig is. My aunt Helen has a farm, and she buzzered some chickens for me and got me some um, guinea feathers. And then I take that and I put it on normally like a green or a chartreuse head or pink. Okay. And then I add a little flicker, a little tinsel to it. Yep. And that's probably one of my favorites. That or the one you got on right now, the white okay. detail and the flicker. So uh, these are are these are guinea feathers or something from a guinea chicken or? A... Yep. I'll be darned. Now did. I mean, could you uh, could you use feathers off just a plain old frying chicken that people is running around people's farms, or do you like these guinea these uh, guinea kinda, feathers it, better? It kind of depends because, like, some of them have that hard little stem that goes through them. And yeah, that, and that doesn't really work. It's got to be nice and smooth and. So. Now, do the uh, do the guinea feathers come in different colors, or can you dye them if you wanted to make different colors? You that could. One? But they got these little white dots on them. Okay. That kind of make it look cool. So. Yeah. Just a little. They're kind of like a grayish with white dots on it. So now, have you ever thought about expanding your your uh, lure business into uh, maybe uh, like maybe coming out with some spinner rigs or anything like that? Um, I've been kinda... thinking about making stuff like beetle spins. And yeah. Different things, but. You know, you keep uh, you keep doing these jigs, and they keep selling as well as they are. You know, you might, you might get some big uh, tackle company like Lindy Little Joe or something to buy you out, you become a millionaire before you're 15. The, Look the, at you, there you are, boy. You know, that's one thing I can say when I'm fishing with Jamie. We're gonna we always catch something, and I, she always outfishes the beards about 10 to 1, which is good. Did you get did you get another one there? See, I'm uh. I'm trying, I'm, I'm being stubborn here though. I'm going without any bait, because I caught that one without any bait on there, just hoping that little flicker spinner will, will kind of... Uh... And you were even saying, Jamie, before, you know, off camera, that, that sometimes when the bite really gets aggressive, you don't even have to put any bait on there, do you? No, they just go right to it. And... A little wave action here. Normally when they see that flicker, then they just don't think about the bait. And... You know, I would imagine these uh, these jigs that we're using today, you got on a, like a school of crappie somewhere or in the spring when those crappies are up shallow. Boy, I bet you these would be oh, dynamite, yeah. huh? Yeah. Man. Now these jigs too are really small. What are, they, are they like a, they look like they're about a, a 64, 30 second ounce? Seconds. Yeah, I was gonna say they're pretty darn small. And, and I noticed you've got a little, you've got a little split shot on yours too to help get down there a little quicker. Yeah. I would imagine too. You probably uh, with that little flicker down there, you probably catch a bass every once in a while too. Yep, I caught a. I had on about a three pound, three three and a half pound bass on the other day when I took a guy out fishing. Did ya? It snapped my line. Yeah, those bass are pretty darn powerful. And now I would imagine too. Did you get one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I gotta resort back to a waxy. I can only go without catching fish for so long. You like a better one? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, oh, big sunny. Oh, that's a dandy. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's a, now there. This Folks, one's got some eggs hold in that, it. Hold that one up there, Jamie. Now, folks, there's a dandy. Look at that! Look at that, Jamie. It's got a little lump on its head, like those big ones do. Yeah. Boy, that's what we're after, folks. And you'll find them out on these humps, like we're doing today. You know, you might have to work around a little bit, and you know, we're catching some small fish too. But boy, that's a that's a dandy. You, you know, that's that's the kind of fish you can't hardly get your hand around that one, Jamie. Yeah. No, and boy, they are they are fun to catch. And again, you know, you got to remember, folks, that the little fish are a lot more aggressive than the bigger fish, so. What you got to do is uh, sort through a lot, and if you can get down there where those bigger fish are, just like that one Jamie caught, you're going to catch plenty. Well, Jamie, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Uh, it's always lots of fun, and 
we'll do it again next year, all right? Okay. Folks, please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. Thanks for joining me and Jamie Usher on the fishing scene. I'll see you out here on the water.